Welcome to your last video for first semester about friction and coefficient of friction and using a frictional force to calculate the velocity on an object moving in one dimension. So after this video, you will be able to describe the difference between static and kinetic friction, calculate the frictional or applied force on an object, and find the velocity for an object that is experiencing that friction. Here is a FET animation to show you the difference between static and kinetic friction. If I apply a force to this wooden crate and the wooden crate is lying on a wooden plank, you will notice here that at first when the crate is not moving, the frictional force will be equal but opposite of the applied force. This is when our frictional force is static, static meaning that the object is not in motion. Eventually, I will apply enough force to the crate that my force will overcome the frictional force. You notice that the magnitude of the frictional force vector has decreased, and now this object is experiencing kinetic friction, and that's just because the object is in motion. Once I let go of the object, the only horizontal force is the friction force, and that friction force is what's going to cause the object to slow down. The amount of friction force applied to that object depends on the object's mass. And to figure out how we use that object's mass to get the frictional force, we use what we call a coefficient of friction. So the definition of coefficient of friction is a scalar quantity, meaning it has no units, that relates the amount of friction applied to an object versus its normal force. So the static friction force can be found with a formula. And actually, the formulas are pretty much almost the exact same for friction and st uh, or static and kinetic force. But what you will see here is that frictional force is less than or equal to what we call mu. This is, looks like a lowercase u, but actually we call it a mu, and I'll draw that for you in a moment. And we multiply this value mu times its normal force. And the normal force of the object is found by multiplying the mass of the object times gravity positive gravity in this case because normal force pushes up on an object. So notice that you've got less than or equal to because the frictional force has to be less than or equal to this value so the object does not move. Take a moment, pause the video, make sure this formula is written down in your notebooks. Kinetic friction is found in the exact same manner but this time, you don't have the less than or equal sign. It's just equal to the coefficient of friction, mu sub k, k being kinetic, times the normal force. So frictional force is F sub F. U sub k, or mu sub k, is the coefficient of kinetic friction. And Fn is the normal force. So in this case, it will be equal to this product, this value, because you have applied enough force to the object to get the object to move. Take a minute, pause the video, make sure this equation is written down in your notes. So what is the coefficient of friction? Coefficient of friction is a scalar quantity that relates the normal force to the friction force. It's easy to think about it as a percentage of your normal force. So notice here that you've got a bunch of different materials. In the FET animation, I described a wooden crate sliding along a wooden plank. So if you notice here, the materials are what two types of materials are rubbing together to create friction. Here was wood on wood. So to solve a problem based on the FET animation, I would use the value for static friction of 0.25 or 25% of the normal force to up to 50% of the normal force. And that depends on the type of wood. And then once the crate started to slide, the kinetic friction force would be about 20% of the normal force. So these are your values for mu. 
And when I said these are your values for mu, and I had those lowercase u types into your notes, if I was to write that with a Latin symbol, it would look like this. Kind of a cursive u. It's called a mu. And so static friction would be mu sub s, kinetic friction would be mu sub k. So let's see how these things are applied. Here is an example. You're going to push a 25.0 kilogram wooden box across a wooden floor at a constant speed. So constant speed is going to indicate here that my frictional force is going to be equal and opposite of my applied force. However, I'm going to be using kinetic coefficient of friction because the box is in motion. How much force will I be exerting on the box? Always begin by drawing a free body diagram. So I'm going to have my box. And on my box, I'm going to have a normal force. I'm going to have gravitational force. And because it's on a flat surface, the normal force is going to cancel out the gravitational force. I'm going to have an applied force. And I'm going to have a frictional force that is equal but opposite to the applied force because the object is going to have a constant velocity or a constant speed. So I want to know what my force applied has to be. So I know that frictional force in this case is going to be mu sub k times the normal force. I need to know my mu sub k, but before I do that, I'm going to remind myself that normal force is going to be just going to be mass times gravity, remembering that gravity is going to be positive 9.8 because it's how much force the wood is pushing up on the crate. So I go back to my previous screen. Wood on wood, when the object is moving, is 0 0.20 or 20% of the normal force. So I go 0 0.20 times 25 times positive 9.8. And what I can do here is multiply it out and figure out what my frictional force is. And I will receive a value of 49 newtons. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I need to know here about frictional force is this is just the magnitude. I have to look at my free body diagram to figure out the direction. And so my frictional force is going to be negative 49 because it's going opposite of my applied force. So my applied force has to be positive 49. So my force applied is going to be positive 49 newtons. The only way you can tell the sign of the force you're trying to solve for is drawing that free body diagram. And it's the easiest way to do it. Now let's see how fast the box was moving when I stopped pushing the object. So I carried over my free body diagram from the last time. And I want to take away some things now. If I stop pushing the box, there's no longer an applied force. That vector gets to go away. And this is my new free body diagram. So the box is going to be accelerating in the negative direction, therefore slowing down. I know a few things here. I know that force equals mass times acceleration. And in this particular case, the only force acting upon this object is my frictional force. And so I can say here, I can solve for acceleration. 
force divided by mass equals acceleration. I know the force, in this case it's frictional, is going to be 49. And what I want to do here is I definitely want to make sure that I throw the negative sign in here because the object is slowing down. So I want to show a negative acceleration divided by 25.0 kilograms. And so my acceleration is going to be negative 49 divided by 25. And I get here with two sig figs, negative 2.0 meters per second squared. I also know that when a box stops, my final velocity will be zero. And I know an initial velocity is what I want to find. I also know that my displacement is 1.50 meters. So here comes those beautiful UEOMs again. I have a final velocity, I have an initial velocity, I have an acceleration, and I have a displacement. This is a perfect case for equation number five. Equation number five. Only one dimension, so I get to leave off the y's and x's here. I can rearrange this to solve for initial velocity. And what I know, the final velocity is going to be zero minus two times negative 2.0 times my displacements. And when I do this, I am going to find that I get two times. 2 times 1.5, I get the square root of 0 minus a negative 6, which is going to be the square root of 6, which is going to be with two sig figs, 2.4 meters per second squared. So taking a look at this, Oops, not meters per second squared. Oops, 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 made a mistake. Meters per second, because this is initial velocity. My crate was moving at 2.4 meters per second before I stopped pushing it. So I would take a moment, go back to the previous slide, review the steps in order to figure out the initial velocity. And this is probably the trickiest math that you're going to encounter in motion in one dimension. So hopefully this will help you do the page 135, 1 through 5 questions. I think I said that right. It might be on page 138. I will double check, but read Schoology just in case I'm wrong. And good luck.